delicious title of the evening. <clears throat> Our sixth and final speech has what I believe to be the best title of any speech of the evening. And our sixth speech is entitled, Prior Convictions and Praise of Richard Pryor. Please welcome the piercingly magnetic Jason Beck. <laughs> Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and our guests. I tip. Did another tip. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been completely and utterly influenced by an entertainer or some sort of political leader or maybe even a philosopher? I remember the first time I ever watched Richard Pryor, the American comedian, on video. I mean, automatically dating myself. I'd seen, growing up, I'd seen some of these movies, and yeah, they were kind of all right. A bit goofy, yeah, Richard Pryor, yeah. But I'd always heard how fantastic his stand-up comedy was. I was like, yeah, these movies, I saw Critical Condition. <laughs> Kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw, and then I saw a, I, I found a cheap DV, a cheap video, two of these stand-up concerts back to back in one video. And it, it was back in the UK, so it was something like seven pounds, which is really cheap. So I put it on, and my mind was completely blown. I'd never seen, at this point, never seen comedy like it. And you. It's something you could watch these days, you kind of think, yeah, I've seen other people do that. But when you cast your mind back and you think, this was a guy who was performing this level of comedy in the late 70s, when he was at his peak, mid to late 70s, and we're now 30 years later, without what he was doing back then, I don't believe comedy would be where it is today. And it is quite an esoteric subject, stand-up comedy and comedy in general, but I... I want to talk about it because it's something that is important to me in my life, but also just in the sheer fact of how deep Richard Pryor was able to go with his art. And here's what I mean. When you, a lot of times when you see a comedian or a comedy, that, you know, they're making observations, uh, you know, when I was on the L and blah, 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 and this politician, he said this stupid thing, blah, blah, blah. Now, Richard Pryor had that at a certain level talk about politics. But then at a deeper level, he was talking about his own experiences in his life. But not only his own experiences, but his own tragic failures and his own emotions and his own personal experiences. And I've never seen at a time, and I've kind of seen a few comedians since who have able to, been able to achieve that level of honesty. And I just think being able to dig really deep in yourself it's kind of a, an interesting thing to consider, even us as, as Toastmasters, you know, trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve. Watching someone like Richard Pryor being able to, you know, just completely be on stage with all of his pain and all of his, uh, you know, humiliation and all of his fantastic times as well. It's just an amazing thing to be able to watch. For, for instance, I remember seeing uh, the, the video that I watched Right at the end, he talked about when he set himself on fire. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know this. He set himself alight free basically, which is a form of uh, taking crack cocaine. He starts off by saying that what happened was that he had a carnation built, put a cookie in it, and it blew up. <laughs> which is quite a, you know, a, like a really um, nice, easy way into it. But obviously, he doesn't talk. He, he spoke about you know using a crack pipe and so on and so forth. And he should have had an idea when he said his bed alight. His bed was on fire at some point. But that wasn't enough of a clue, and he carried on going until one day he set himself alight. And to be able to talk about something, an experience like that on stage, and how, you know, he said, I was running down the street and the homeless guy was there going, hey buddy, you got a light? <laughs> Just the sheer level of honesty to talk about pain like that, and he was, he was talking about how when he was in hospital, 
um, the doctor came over and went, oh, damn, can I, can I get an autograph, Richard? Can I, can I get the, your last autograph? And you can imagine that he was in that position and you know, have a doctor say that to you. And, and then watching, and watching the news as he's, in, as he's in the emergency hospital and they're saying, Richard Pryor died this evening. And he's there going, no, no, oh, no, no. And it's to be able to see that. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I, this is back when I started writing comedy for the first time again, you know, you know, I can't get a girlfriend, it's so terrible. <laughs> and watch someone like that, and I'm thinking, my God, I'm just screwing up this piece of paper and throwing it out, because it's just the, to be able to, you know, talk about what's going on in your life, that honestly, is, is just an amazing thing to see. And I think, you know, his influence is certainly felt today in, in other comedians, one of, one of his contemporaries, uh, George Carlin, other comedians today, like Louis C.K., I'm not sure if he's uh, aware of uh, who he is, he's got a show on uh, FX at the moment called Louie. And, and just, you know, where comedy is today, you know, Richard Pryor was talking about, you know, politics, satire, he had characters, he talked, you know, he had characters that he'd met in his life uh, growing up here in Illinois, and other characters he'd met making films. You know, you can see his influence in a lot of different comedians today where, you know, some people just talk about politics like, uh, like Chris Rock. Other people talking about the black experience, like uh, um, Eddie Murphy, for example. And Chris Rock as well, but Chris Rock is very, um, I, in, in my mind, Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy are two sides of Richard Pryor. Um, you've got Chris Rock with a very politicized version of uh, Richard Pryor, and then Eddie Murphy is a very sort of social conscious, sorry, black experience of Richard Pryor. But there was one guy who was doing both, and that was Richard Pryor. And it's amazing when you consider, when you see these two guys, and you look back to the 70s, and even further back when his career was even earlier, and he was like an, an early version of, a rip-off version of Bill Cosby. And you can see the, you can see the journey um, in how he completely changed his act over the years. It's an amazing thing to watch. And for me, you know, it was, um, you know, I'm, I'm forever indebted um, watching that experience and thinking, you know, whenever I write comedy, I, I always think, you know, is there any way I can dig deeper rather than going, oh, you know, I, I, I tripped over as I was walking down some stairs and how humiliated was I? You know, you kind of think, well, yeah, that is on some level, but how can you go deeper? And with people like Richard Pryor and George Carlin and even Louis C.K. today, it's about going deeper and deeper into your own personal experiences mm. and sharing that with the world and being able to um, mine the comedy in that. Um, which I think is a really, really powerful thing to be able to do. And I just want to finish um, with a quote from a performance artist called Tim Miller, who said that being able to um, tap into something which is so personal, it provides us a window onto the universal experience. Mr. Tosima. He will tell you, it's too magnanimous, but I will tell you, that was an impromptu speech prepared that probably 10 minutes. I said her song scribbling notes. Mm -hmm.